Hello everyone, how do you do? This is Project How To Do, my name is Konstantin and today I want to show you how I made this portable coil gun. I make it just for fun, so I don't have a goal to build the most powerful pistol. Actually, I don't even make any calculation before assembling. At first, let's refresh the theory in memory. How does coil guns work? We charge a capacitor with high voltage, usually about 400 volts, and then discharge it to a coil of copper wire, which is located on the barrel. When current flowing through the coil, it creates a powerful electromagnetic field, and bullet made of ferromagnetic retracting in the barrel, capacitor discharging very fast, so ideally it loses all energy when bullet will be right on the middle of the coil, and bullet continue to move by inertia. Before we step into the assembly, I must warn you that you have to be very careful working with high voltage. It could be dangerous. I will make a coil gun with only one coil, because it's extremely simple compared to the device with few coils. You need to synchronize all coils, use some kind of sensor to detect position of the bullet. Also, multi-stage device simply would not fit in the form factor of the pistol. Even now body is completely filled. As a basis we're taking such kind of pistols. And because I have a 3D printer it's logical to print it. I start with a 3D model, as usual working in Fusion 360. All files will be in the description, in case someone wants to make it. I try to put all components as compactly as possible. By the way there are very few of them. 4 18650 batteries, giving a total approximately 15 volts. In their holder in the models I made the sockets to install a Cooper foil jumper, to have a serial connection of batteries. Next is boost converter, increasing the battery voltage to about 400 volts to charge a capacitor. Capacitor itself, in my case 1000 microfarad, 450 volts and coil. Small parts like thyristor, 1.5 volt battery to operate it, button, you can place anywhere in the body, glue it to the wall. I didn't make a specific space for it. For the barrel you need a non-magnetic tube, I will use a body from a ballpoint pen. It's much easier than paint it on 3D printer and then try to ideally polish the inner walls. I wind a 19 gauge copper wire turn to turn, put a layer of electrical tape after each layer of coil. I didn't count how many layers I made just before it's completely filled. I decided to make a handle of wood, although of course it's possible to print it, but I personally like working with wood. When the model is ready I start to printing. Almost all the details I did with 0.8mm nozzle and only the button holding the barrel with 0.4mm. Printing took about 7 hours. I ran out of filament, so I only have pink PLA, despite my love for this color, in this case it's probably not the best choice. After printing I carefully clean off the details from supports, then I went to the store to buy the primer and paint. Initially I want to use acrylic paint, but it's refused to hold even after primer. Also from what I read about painting PLA, there are special spray paints that will perfectly hold without primer. But uh, I haven't found one. Of course it's turned out not so well, but bear in mind that I hang half out of the window painting and trying to do not drop something down, especially camera. Let's say that uneven surface is such a style, and in general it was planned. While the printing was going and the paint was drying, I was working on the handle. I didn't have a suitable thickness lumber, so I glued together two pieces of old parquet. When it dried, I gave it a rough shape with a jigsaw. By the way, I was surprised that the Corolla jigsaw without any difficulties cuts 4 cm of wood. Further, with the help of Dremel and Sabertooth bit around the corners, because of the small widths of the workpiece, the handle turns out not quite as desired. 
but I tried to cover this inconvenience with ergonomic design. Next, working with bit with sandpaper, then handheld for 100 grit, and as usual layer of Danish oil. Fix the handle with a screw in a pre-drilled channel. Finish with sandpaper and small files, I make sure that everything closed, held, clinging as needed. Now we can go to the electronic part. First of all, I install the power button. Then I make the battery holder. For this I cut a copper foil into strips and glue it under the battery contacts, connecting them in serial. Always checking that there is a good contact between battery and foil. When this is done, you can connect the high voltage model through the button, capacitor to the model and even try to charge it. I set the voltage to about 410 volts. To discharge it to the coil without loud clapping and sparks, it necessary to this thyristor, which works like a switch. It closes by applying small voltage of 1.5 volts to the gate electrode. Unfortunately, my boost converter has a middle point, which doesn't allow without special tweaks to take voltage from the already installed 18650 batteries. So I just took a AA battery, and the small clock button serves as a trigger, commuting currents of hundreds of amperes. This would be the end, but two thyristors that I have can't withstand such current, so I had to order a more powerful guy. 70 TPS 12. It can withstand 200 volts and 1100 amperes in pulse. And because project frozen for a week anyway, I bought details to make such kind of a charge indicator. It can work in two modes, lighting only one diet and moving it, or lighting a bar of diets. I prefer second option. The circuit is pretty simple, but if it's difficult for you, you can buy an assembled model, and adding a couple mega ohm resistors on the input, you can connect it directly to the capacitor. The new thyristor, as planned, easily passes powerful currents, and the only one moment it's not clothing. So before the shot, you need to turn off the charging, so the capacitor can be completely discharged and the thyristor would come to its original state. This could be avoided if the converter had a halfway rectifier. I tried to remake the existing one, but uh, it didn't give any success, so I skip it. Keep it in mind. Next, you need to make a bullets. As I said before, they need to magnetize. Running through the construction shop, found those wonderful nails. They have a diameter of 5.9 mm and perfectly go into the barrel. It uh, remains only to cuff off the cap and sharpen the top a little bit. The weight of the bullet is 7.8 gram. Unfortunately, now I have nothing to measure speed. Finishing assembly, gluing body and the coil. Well, now we can test it. This toy easily makes holes in the aluminum cans, goes through the cardboard and in general felt pretty powerful. Although many people say the coil guns are silent, it slam a little when shoot, even without a bullet. While large current passing through the coil, even its fraction of a second, it hit up the wire and slightly expands it. I think if you fill the coil with a resin, you can partially get rid of this effect. As a result, I want to say that this project was really interesting to do. I would like in the future to make something else like that. Maybe multi stage call again. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you soon.